91%, almost there. Not my armor anymore. They're talking with Rafferty, yeah, I know. I forgot to turn off the noise making thing. So, I'm here, and that's the main mission. Oh, right, fleet missions. Eh, we'll see if I even kill. All sail, she'll take. Hunters. Sing us a song, lads. Hello, Confederate. Uh, my day just started. It's 8.40 a.m. So my day has not basically consisted of getting up, walking the dog, having breakfast and taking a shower. I hope your day has been more interesting. What time is it anyway? I also need to make my phone shut up. What did you do that was boring? Whoa, what happened here? City under siege? What do you mean? City? Which city? Who did this? It were a large vessel, the Royal Fortune. Roberts offered no quarter. Didn't say nothing. Well, I've been guilty of doing the same thing. A Parliament Guard in London. Wow. That's that's very interesting. Parliament Guard was in the, the people with the uniform and the big hats. That's that's cool. That's extremely cool and you're saying it's a boring job. Well, I guess I guess it might be, but it's still quite an honor, isn't it? Aren't you supposed to not move at all? <laughs> that sounds awesome. So, so you, you dance, but when someone pulls out the phone, you stop? Ah. What, what do they do? To 
Powder barrels. Weren't you? Isn't that kind of part of the job? Piggy. Step back here. Aha! Stop. Intruder! Help! Ow. I would blow him to hell. They use powder kegs as well, the powder kegs. Jump. Got him sighted! I think I can hit him! Come on, slime! I mean, I keep. I kept thinking that it's gonna go uh, further in time, and when we got Syndicate, but then they went back, and they really don't know. Whatever they feel like it, I really have no idea. I'm just currently. I'm just trying to get through the main series. Before the next one comes out, which is probably unlikely, but I will. Ooh, Russian Revolution or Irish Revolution would be cool. I think World War the World Wars have been exhausted. And I kind of feel numb from it. Even though I'm Jewish. Where are the other powder kegs? Yeah, World War Two, World War One less, but still close enough. I mean, I think World War One was kind of boring. It was all trench warfare. Almost nothing interesting happened. Okay, here's another powder keg. Come get me. I got one. Damn, he's out of range. I think the Irish Revolution, or maybe the Syrian Revolution, would be a very cool setting. Work. Uh, World War One was kind of a mess. Not sure I remember all my history correctly, but I 
but it was a bit of a mess. What else would be cool? I mean, there are a lot of tiny revolutions you can use. Now that I've played Black Flag, maybe a Mayan set. Uh, let's see, it would be nice. Hi. Him in my I can shoot him from here. No, you can't. <clears throat> right, I forgot the bell. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's what, what I like about this game, because uh, Edward Kenway is from Swansea, and uh, Matt Ryan, who plays Edward Kenway, is from Swansea. So they really did it, and it's fun that you find notes. It sounds like an American constipated. I haven't played... Uh... What was that? How did it... Odyssey. Yeah, I haven't played Odyssey yet. Yeah, but I really like that in this game, you got a guy from Swansea to play a guy from Swansea. I don't know what it is for Valhalla, but I hope it's better. How do I get there? And I was just thinking that maybe if they did a game that happened... Uh, I mean, I guess it's probably just a better AC3, but a, a game with Native Americans uh, when the America was just being, being colonized. <laughs> yeah, Scandinavians really have their own unique accent. Why? Who chases me now, eh? Is it a spectre come to spook me? Huh? Or the gaunt remains of a man I sent to hell? It's a deathly business. Tatty me lay by. Not like of yore, when a scrap of parchment warranted thundering till your heart be sated. How did I climb that? Oh, that's cute. Oh, fixed. Okay, where's Roberts? Where is the Dread Pirate Roberts? Hey, whoa. 
Walians? You mean from Welsh? Got a line on him. Ah! Holy crap! God damn it! Get out of here! Move, move, move! I'm coming in! Give me a second! I have seen it, I haven't played it yet. Did they sound Welsh? Ah, damn it! Ghost the gallants and royals. Storm captain, looks bad. Crowd on every inch of stone. Careful of that mortar fire. Yeah, they should be careful of my mortar fire. Ready to fire, sir. Fire! Give me a shot. Ready to fire, sir. Fire. 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 Yeah, because I think they got Irish and Welsh and these actors. Got them. Ready to fire, sir. Fire. 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 Oh, crap. Fire. Fire. I'm not causing any damage, damn it. Edward, there's cross trees on the horizon. Flying British colors. The Spanish ships there, Captain. This will be a mess if we don't hurry. Where's all the toys? How are they still going around? Captain, we've a better than even chance. No, there's a device with him that needs taking. I'll have to board her myself. Use the rope dart to kill robots. Hang on. By Jove, Edward Kennedy. How can I not be impressed by the attention you paid me? May the best of we two sing praises of the second. I need to go up. to go there and there hang on ah shit up 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 
up. Get up. Get up. And now let me see. Let me see. Get him! Get him! There we go. Uh, a merry life and a short one, as promised. How well I know myself. And what of you, Edward? Have you found the peace you seek? I'm not aiming so high as that. But what's peace but a confusion between two wars? Oh. <laughs> oh, you're a stoic then. But perhaps I was wrong about you. She might have had some use for you after all. She? Of whom do you speak? Oh, she who lies in wait. Entombed. I had hoped to find her, to see her again. To open the door of the temple and hear her speak my name once more. Thank you for following. Talk sense, man. Oh, I was born too soon. Like so many others before. Where's the device, Robert? Uh, 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 destroy this body, Edward. The Templars. If they take me. Yeah, I'm familiar with the Falkland Walls, but I'm not privy to the details. I don't remember. But I know I know it has been rough. I'm kind of contested, actually. <clears throat> Every last scrap of duck on the wind. Okay, well two now. I did finish everything. Basically Britain declared war on Argentina because they wouldn't get off our land, something like that. Was it really Britain's land? Because that's sometimes contested. Yeah, I just need the legend last legendary ship and go to Havana. So let's do the legendary ship first. Out. Let's go! Oh, I think my mortar ammo is depleted. Almost. Eh, fine. I'll get some more ammo. Brief the topsails and gallants! Loose all! Let's move! What was their claim? Okay, this is the legendary ship with the big ram, so I need to be... I need to keep my distance. Actually, I need to get close and follow them. Get behind them. Ah, ship sighted! Oh, she's a beast! Yeah. Six hundred meters. Yeah, it's the one with the huge ram. Ready to fire, sir! Fire! Fire! Oh. 
Oh, that hurts. Holy shit, it's fast. We're ready, sir. Ready to fire, sir. So fast. Yeah, I fought every legendary ship but this one, which was the first one I tried, and kicked my ass, Race for impact. and was super annoying. Fire! Fire! Ah, shit! I've landed a solid volley, sir! Cannon! Put a shot Fire! through there! Awaiting order! Fire! We're ready, sir! Fire! It's so freaking fast. They land another, we're done for. Fire! Fire! Reloading! Holy shit, I'm dead. Fire! Damn these eyes! Ready to fire, sir! Don't lose sight of them. My favorite country in North Korea. <laughs> I didn't know you had favorite countries. Are you supposed to have favorite countries? Damn, that's my last motto. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about which country we like. Oh, uh, she excited. Oh, she's a beast. Okay, maybe I should really keep my distance and use fire bells. <laughs> he makes me feel apprehension and kind of disgust. What's she doing? She's coming straight at us! Ah! As much sail as you can! Awaken your mark! Fire! Ready for impact! Ready to fire, sir! Then fire! Turn! Yes! Fire! 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 Ready to fire, sir! Fire! Why the hell is this thing so fast? Awaiting your mark, Captain. Fire! Fire! 
Ram it! Blast it! Sorry for not paying attention, but this is taking all of mine. Fire again! Ah. Uh. You don't pick yourself on my kid. <laughs> He's sexy as my Scottish girlfriend. Yes. Hang on a minute. Something important. Ah, uh, shit. I'm making too much noise. Huh. Oof. You're too sexy for your shot, Borgia. <laughs> That's an interesting topic of conversation for this chat. Okay, I need to go to Havana. Let's go to Havana. <laughs> hey, a man, a guy gotta love himself. You gotta love yourself before you can have others love you. Puedo ayudarlo en algo. Also, I find Scottish women, especially redheads, very sexy. Let's get the Blackwood Wheel. Need 400 cloth for the flower sails. Yeah, I did see. All have, it seems like all Havana is restricted. Yeah, looks like all Havana is restricted area. But I can fast travel. <laughs> I'm kind of wondering if Vogel is just trolling right now. Okay, uh, if this starts making someone uncomfortable, I'm gonna at least uh, term, uh, temporarily ban you. <laughs> Who's that? Painted blood. Captain Kenway! I'm assuming this is the friendliest face you've seen since dropping anchor? Is Havana under curfew on my account? Mm, aye. Torres seems to think someone's coming after him. He's not wrong. A monkey-looking thing? 
Is that what I think it is? Aye. Watch. Through the blood of the governor, we can see through his eyes. That's... that's by the church. Keep this safe. Just in case. I'll be at the bureau. Mm. Good luck. <laughs> I just request that everyone remain civil. This is I designate my chat as a safe place, so if ever anyone feels uncomfortable, I'll make sure they do. Well, do I drop over there? Hmm. Oopsie. Oh, come on, I just want to buy some stuff. Just let me buy some stuff. Fine. Change person. I don't think he's a swinger. Que tenga un buen día. Locate Torres. Okay, I need this to stop right now. Tenemos un asunto pendiente con el tiburón en el castillo. El señor Torres querrá hablar con nosotros personalmente. ¿El propio Torres? Menudo honor. No te alteres, amigo. Esto no es una reunión de sociedad. Seguidnos. Um. How do I even get down from here? Señor, disculpe, pero ¿por qué tenemos que entrar ahí? Ya han enviado la mayoría de la flota. ¿Estás cuestionando una orden directa, soldado? No, señor, pero es que... Bien. ¡Atención! Where are you going? To the left. Ok. No. La ciudad entera en alerta por esos asesinos. Calla. 
Un rumor acaba con la confianza más rápido que una bala. Ni menciones a los asesinos. Oh, what are you studying? He oído historias sobre ellos. Espero que te equivoques. Ahí, vosotros dos. Cerrad esas bocas antes de que os las tenga que cerrar yo. Señor, sí, señor. What the hell is going on over there? Oh, Dios, ahora qué? Marcus! Oh, Jesus! You bleeding animal! Ow. Ah, señor! Ah! Esos prisioneros. Cállate. Bien. Continuemos. Vosotros, seguidnos. Y esta vez no vayáis a meter la pata. Why do you say lies? I mean, if someone says something, the first thing you do is probably to believe them. We're checking the haystack? <laughs> How can we trust you? I mean, I've, first time I've seen uh, Parliament Guard watching Twitch in their spare time, but why not? Yeah, he's not an Irish, he's not a Spaniard. Um, stay out of combat. Kill Torres. Okay, I'll go the other way. Actually, I believe... I totally believe you when you say your, bob, your job is tough, because standing around for a long time. I mean, how, how long is the shift? Is it four hours? Eight hours? Because I can totally believe it's a tough job when, if it's a long shift. Okay. You need to turn around. And then I'll kill this guard. And that's tough, just standing around for eight hours.
Okay. Actually, the first kick is to stun them, the next kick is to assassinate them. But yeah, you can kill someone with a properly placed kick if they can't protect themselves. You're done, Torres. Ah, it's a goof. This again, eh? Oh, we're doing fists? Alto, quiero hablarte. You're a canny one up close. Ow. How are you weak against bullets? Ah. How do I kill you? You're too skilled for sword play. Uh huh. Okay, okay. No man's immune to a pistol shot, I reckon. Yeah, I guess I know what you're going for. But let me quit a bit to regenerate health. I can't score a hit like that. How about a little gunplay? Okay, let me reload. Come on, aim with your pistol. Aim. Okay, that's not how it's supposed to work. Come on, shoot me. Oh, there we go. Where are the other guards? I need another guard. Okay, let me get some other guards. Come on, climb this thing. Is he following me? Oh, okay. No. No one there. All the guards are gone.
What about Brazil? Oh, why not? Fine, I'm out of guards. If you could speak, mate, it would gladden me to hear your side. But never mind you that. You humbled me once, and I took that hard lesson, and I bettered myself. <laughs> Die, knowing that for all of our conflict, you helped make a soldier out of a scoundrel. Uh, please keep the discussion to English for the for Leave everyone who is watching. for a lasting peace. Down among the dead. Yeah, that looked like Russian to me. Actually, English borrows a lot from German, but it also borrows from French and from Hebrew a lot and uh, lots of other languages. English is an amalgamation, but mostly German. Go through you. I'm from Israel. Torres left the city. Who were you chasing? That vial was labeled Torres, but held the blood of his second. Where's he gone? <clears throat> left port this morning, heading west along the coast. The observatory. Will we follow? Send word to Atabai. We've cornered our man. Into the wind. Every last scrap What's this Taurus doing looking for the observatory? When you're holding the treasure yourself. Torres doesn't know I have it. So why bring it to him and risk its capture? I'd like him to know I have it. Just before he <laughs> dies. <laughs> this reminds me of when I listened to KNC. They said, if you took a man's uh, if you took a man's intestines, blood vessels, and nerves and put them end to end. 
that man would die. Am I even going the right way? No. I need to go to the observatory. So why not just port over here? Easier. There's a fleet blocking the cove we want. Aye, the Armada. That's Torres and his men. And you're going to do what exactly? Get rid of them? way past them. Just get rid of them? Wait, there is no back way into the observatory. They're gonna notice me. Ship coming after us, sir! That's the man of war, sir! Spanish enzymes! Seems to be alone, sir! They're not available in open conflict. Look, Fire! Yeah! Yeah! On your mark, Captain! Fire! More sail! All sail! Turn. The hunters are shooting me. Okay. Don't shoot into the water. Yeah, I like the coons too. The meaning of life is 42. But seriously, the meaning of life is what you make of it. I'm sorry. That still did not count as a level 3 patrol. That is a man of war. Yeah, I'm not even gonna bother. I'm Stop, gonna sink it. Let's get moving. What? More hunters? No, hunters going down. Ebola 
time to hail. Get on to planks. Okay, full up on ammo. Let's go. Ever a splinter. Sequence twelve. Number seven two. Number forty five. What? What does that mean? Who's this Taurus? I and what's your mind on to earn a death sentence? He's a Templar. Like Rogers and Hornigold. Men cooking up schemes to use the observatory for ill purposes. For power and control. The violence he'd cause with this thing would be subtle but heavy. Deadly, yet leaving no mark. Does that make sense? Like, if there was a drought, and people was thirsty, and one man had a large cask of water but gave a sip to none, he'd be a killer with no blood in his hands. Yeah. Aye, like that. Fair enough. Actually, I only played the GTA 1 and 2. <laughs> So I think I have. I think I have GT San Andreas in my library, but I haven't played it yet. Lord, there's a bit of a chill, isn't there? Hmm. Thought we might see some soldiers and the like. Maybe they've gone. No, they're here. Deep in the jungle. The chest. And the viewpoint. And the Hutia. I think I played a little bit of Allied Assault. But again, not to full completion. I also never played a single Call of Duty game. I just never got to it. Though I do want to play it, I do want to do a full Call of Duty run from the beginning, like I do with, Black, with Assassin's Creed. But my problem is that the cheapest you can get the first call, two Call of Duty games is if you buy the Call of Duty War Chest, and it's $15 for 15-year-old games. And that's where the last chest is. Synchronize all viewpoints. European assault? I don't think I heard of that one. I don't remember that one. Okay, complete. That should be every chest in the game. Vegetal observation room. Just there. What should we do? We should free the guardians. <laughs> yes, leave all your locks. Oh, those are dead soldiers. Come on. Jesus, look at all this. Corpses for miles. They brought every ounce <laughs> of the they had. <laughs> sorry, Annie. I'm sorry. Where did you go? Oh, hi. <laughs> <coughs> Wait, someone has ammo? Oh, did you unlock the, the emote? Shalom! <laughs> Wait, 
They said... They said, free the Guardian hostages. Dude. You okay? Need some help? Sleep dots. <coughs> That's a croc that just ate a person. Ha, indeed. <laughs> Why is it so red all of a sudden? some monkey. Are they but no, they're not burning everything. They're holding hostages. So what if I do this? Okay, I teleport stab. Do you see them, Edward? Sorry, I need the ammo. <laughs> okay, let's go. Why are you telling me to get ammo if my sleep dots are full? <coughs> Shh! The Spaniards up ahead! Of course they are! Be very, very quiet. Let's go around. <laughs> Hang on, need to take care of him. That's four out of seven. Let's get back up. Don't 
Make a scene. Keep it quiet. God damn it. Why did you have to make a scene? Okay, just the one more. Really? That's it. Cool. For some reason. Do you have ammo? Good. Oh. Later, Anne. I'll tell you all when this is finished. Why is this thing going down? Holy Mother of God. Is this the place we've come to see? Aye. Okay, everyone's inside the observatory. Stand watch here, and let none follow. Victor that doesn't fight, Sai. What the hell is going on here? I get it, okay. No, no, stay on the left. And switch to the right. And go here. Can you climb anymore? No. Why complicated? Getting my camera. Oh. 
Use the observatory's defenses to kill guards. Oh, now you tell me. Oh, come on! What is this, Uncharted? Supposed to okay. What is he holding though? We could have worked together, Edward. We could have taken power for ourselves and brought these miserable empires to their knees. There is so much potential in you. So much you have not yet accomplished. I could show you things. Mysteries beyond anything that you could imagine. Uh-huh. Come on! You could have grabbed that. Too late to kill girls with observatory defenses. <clears throat> Ah, damn it, I forgot. You know, that. <laughs> I did it almost perfectly the first try. Now it's shaking all of a sudden. Okay. Up, down, jump.
Ah. We could have worked together, Edward. We could have taken power for ourselves and brought these miserable empires to their knees. There is so much potential in you. So much you have not yet accomplished. I could show you things. Mysteries beyond anything that you could imagine. Um, doesn't the thing go up a little bit? Okay, so how do I get that? Is there something to, to grab a hold of? Or did I just miss it? I think I might have just missed it. <coughs> Stupid. Okay, let's do this again. Yeah, I'm supposed to come from this angle. Just need the, sig the assassin signal on and the shield down at the same time. Does this murder fulfill you? I'm only seeing a job done, Torres. As you'd have done with me. As we have done, I think. You have no family anymore, no friends, no future. Your losses are far greater than ours. Oh no. That may be. Gain the family. But killing you rights a far greater wrong than ever I did. You honestly believe that? You would see all of mankind corralled into a neatly furnished prison, safe and sober, yet dulled beyond reason and sapped of all spirit. So I, with everything I've seen and learned in these last years, I do believe it. You wear your convictions well. They suit you. Bonk. Torres awakened something fierce. Are we safe? With the device returned, I believe so. What do you call this place? The observatory. Captain Kenway's folly! It's a Walter Sutukila. Kapwenen. We will seal this place and discard the key. Until another sage appears, this door will remain locked. There were vials when I came here last. Filled with the blood of ancient men, Robert said, but they're gone now. Then it's up to us to recover them before the Templars catch wind of this. You could join us in that cause. I will, but only after I fix what I mangled back home. What's that? It arrived last week. Oh, what does it say? What does it say? Is she already married? What does it say?
Just like starting over. Just don't eject me from the animus. Wakey, wakey. Uh. I don't believe we've been formally introduced. Not in this era, anyway. <laughs> I wish I could explain all the strangeness, but there isn't much time. The short of it is, you saw my beloved Juno. And for a brief moment, I thought she might occupy this tender body of yours. But something went wrong. And now, she's back out there, adrift. Oh, she was magnificent once. One of a race of beautiful, wonderful creatures. They created your kind. Did you know that? Your people were tools to them. That's all you have ever been. That's all you should ever be. One day soon, I hope. For the world is nearly ready for her return. Wired. Prepared for a second coming. <laughs> Your nostrils are flowing. Uh-oh. Here they come. Those Templars. Or maybe assassins this time. Idiots. All of them. Hell. I envy you. It was her wish that I be here to greet her. It was her experiment that made it possible for my rebirth as one of these things. Ah! Stay down! Get down on your back! Now! He's got a gun! Guide me into the grave, beloved! I am your instrument! Put the gun down! Drop it! Drop your weapon! One of us just shot yourself. Clear! Clear! Check his vitals. He's bleeding fast. Check the victim. Are you okay? Can you hear me? Hello? Talk to me. You alright? No. There you are. Thank God. How could I have not known about the sage between them? I hope you feel well. You look good. Can you stand? I can give it a shot. Good. Try walking around. A doctor came by, said there wasn't anything to worry about. That the... Hang on. Her purpose is not ours to achieve, but ours to be received, given by her graces and instruction. Death to the false fabricators of pleasure and in indolence. The old order must be restored, the new order destroyed. The two Templars dedicated to order and stability and peace through the application of her iron will and not through the dulling satisfactions of pleasure and indolence. So that guy's been putting all the post-it notes everywhere. Put in the syringe was far, far below a lethal dose. I feel terrible about all this, about everything. All our evidence pointed to you, but it was John all along. God, the things we found on his computer. Whatever you need, we'll provide. You've done an amazing job. Speaking of which, our trailer is finished. Would you like to see it? No. I need that much. Blackbeard the musical. <laughs> I uploaded it to your database. You can watch it here or at your animus. I think you'll love it. It really captures the, the essence of the era. Take care, and again, thank you. Um, sure, watch it. In a world <laughs> where pirates rule the waves, <laughs> these men will discover that nothing is sacred, and everyone is committed <laughs> to rum, <laughs> plunder, and women. Hola, ladies. This summer, Abstergo Entertainment invites you aboard for the adventure of a lifetime. So sharpen your cutlasses, shine your hooks, and sail with the Devils of the Caribbean. Oh my god. This virtual experience is not being rated. Oh my god. That's awful. That's so bad. That is so bad. I have computers to hack. Hello? Hello? Ah, <clears throat> look, sorry about this. Uh, my name is 
Sean, and uh, back there is Rebecca, my partner uh, in crime. Hello. Bloody good work earlier. Honestly, I mean it. Delivering us all that data. It's really just too bad that our man on the inside was such a, um, <laughs> uh, how, how, how to put it? Fanatic. Fanatic is the best word, I suppose. We take who we can get. Exactly, exactly. Well put. Uh, we saw in John an opportunity to burrow deeper into Abstergo's cloud servers, and I'm not ashamed to say we took it. Uh, not realizing, of course, that he was enlisting you to help him. And to blame, should anything go wrong. I suppose it all works. in the end. Most of it, anyway. What Sean really wants to say is, if you're up for more hacking, we are too. John gave you level 3 security clearance before you died. You should use it. The assassins don't have the resources to pay you like the Templars do, but we'll make it worth your while. Uh, look, we should really cut it short, Bex. 20 seconds. All right. Good luck. Cheers, mate. And top-notch work. Really top -notch. Give yourself a pat on the back. And happy hacking. Okay, what do we have here? Yeah, no. Fine. Zero audio file. Timestamp August 16th, 2013. The following audio clips were selected from over 160 hours of real to real tape found in the residence of the late Dr. Warren Vidic following his murder in December 2012. According to labels on the tape's canisters, these recordings were made over a 14 month period between 1980 and 1981 without the consent of their primary subject, Mrs. Eileen Bach a colleague of Dr. Vidic's and the originator of Abstergo's surrogate initiative. Mrs. Bach is now deceased. It should be stated unequivocally that Dr. Vidic made these recordings illegally and of his own volition using wiretaps and hidden microphones. Abstergo Industries had no knowledge of his actions and disavows any responsibility for them. And we're live. Capacitators at full. Is the signal in? A little more. You feel anything? Don't be timid. Double it. No, we're taking it easy. 20%. 30. Eileen, go easy. We're six past yesterday. And boost the inputs. Too risky. Not if we split the I.O. signals. 25%. Ease up. Oh, okay. There. I see something. I... What is it? Mein Gott. I hear talking. You're... You're okay? Yeah, I hear a stimme. It's... it's German. My name is Miriam Kurz. I see a light. It's cold. Ich werde nichts sagen. There's a man with me. Mehr werde ich nicht sagen. <laughs> Keep an eye on all fighters. My name is Miriam Kurz und ich bin eine Navajo. Das Hitlers Zwang, der macht uns klein. Noch liegen wir in Ketten. Doch einmal werden wir wieder frei. Wir werden die Ketten schon brechen. Eileen? Denn unsere Fäuste, die sind hart, ja. Und die Messer sitzen lose. Für die Freiheit der Jugend kämpfe, Navajos. <lacht> Switch off. Powering down. Kämpf, Navajos. Get her out of there. <lacht> What? Oxygen. Von der Valve. No. <lacht> no, Satish, I'm, I'm fine, really. Quit the heroics. Just breathe. Better? Yes. Yes, thank you. Did we get something? It'll take a while to pass. What did you see? It wasn't just seeing. It was feeling. Being. I was... I was scared. You were shouting in German? I think I was in Germany. I was in Germany, Satish. Good morning. Well rested? Exhausted. Yesterday was an incredible find. Seems so. What did it feel like? It's foggy, but I... I relived the memories of a young German woman. Early 20s, I think. A man was interrogating me, looming over me and asking questions. He was shouting, but I was shouting back. And then this... 
This poem just came out, like a chant. Fascinating. I'm eager for you to hear the tape. Is it ready? Yes, we transliterated the data onto an audio file. It took all night to process the language. Spool it up. Of course. I was it. German. What takes so long? Judging by the subject matter and the setting, I'd say you landed somewhere in Germany in the 1940s, one or two generations back. During the war, I'd imagine. 1940s Germany? <laughs> that would be Miriam Kurtz, my ex-husband's mother. What? So she's not related to you in any way? God, I hope not. I'd hate to find out my ex-husband is also my brother. <laughs> well, if it was Miriam Kurtz, then we hit a home run. You tapped into someone else's bloodline entirely. How? <laughs> Should we celebrate? We'll listen first. Surrogate initiative, test session 23, July 29th, 1980. Host, Eileen Bach. DNA sample SB1970. It's a little garbled at first. This is you settling into the memory. My name is Miriam Kurtz, and I am now young. Where did you last see the artifact? Who holds it now? I'll say nothing. I've told you all I know. I don't believe that is true. Who has the artifact? Hexler's dick takes make us small, and you're bound in chains. But one day again, we shall walk tall. No binds with us. Restrain. Enough. For hard on our beasts, yes, and lies at our wrists for you to be free. Now yours, lay siege. Lock her away. No. Okay, it's more like fine. And that's where we pull you out. Whoa. What would it take to get a visual render of all that? Mm, months, unfortunately. It took 13 hours just to process the audio. Visual takes much longer. But Vidic is able to record audio and visual in real time. How does he do it? His subjects are exploring their own genetic memories. That requires much less processing power. Uh, hold on, sorry. Eileen here. Hello. You have 10 o'clock in Lillian's office. It's 10.13 now. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Tell her I'll be right there. And tell her we have some good news. No problem. You in trouble? Ugh, the monthly progress report. I'm trying to be honest about our progress, but no matter how much I polish our facts, Warren Vidic swoops in, promising the moon for pennies, and gets ten times the funding for his Animus project. Well, we are using his Animus technology. He's the foundation. We are the skyscraper. Which is why he should be a tech lead, not a project director. <sighs> good work, Satish. It's incredible footage, really. Clear and vivid. And the subject was synced for a full 62 minutes. Came out speaking French after his last session. Passably fluent. And with full recall of everything he'd gone through. Sorry, sorry I'm late. I was reviewing some data. It's fine. Warren was just telling me about his first subject. Mr... No names. Call him Subject One. Confidentiality. And how about you, Eileen? What's your good news? Well, we did it. We synced with an unembedded memory outside the bloodline. That's a first. Really? Satish was able to process the audio today. A short clip. You can hear it for yourself. Only audio? No real-time memory feeds like Vidic has? Well, that's the difficulty with surrogate genetic memory data. Because I'm viewing memories not embedded in my own DNA, we can't rely on my cognitive faculties to help me process the signal. All we can do is record the raw data and transliterate it later. Hold on. You're running this experiment on yourself? I am. It's going well. I don't like the sound of that. Look, the sample I'm using, the DNA comes from my own son. It's safer this way. Ah, good thinking. 50% of my son's DNA is also mine, which reduces the danger by a huge margin. Meaning, I can now explore the memories of people who aren't directly related to me, on his father's side. Oh. But for brief periods of time, I imagine. Right. Just a minute or two, so far. But we're getting there. Come by the lab and listen for yourself. I will, when I have a moment. Unfortunately, work beckons. Ladies? That man is colder than a San Francisco summer. <laughs> Stay focused, Eileen. You both have important work to do. Obviously. But my work requires his animus technology. I feel a little caged in. That's collaboration, Eileen. It's how science works. I shouldn't have to remind you. I know. I'm just tired. Stop by and see us today. 
We have a lot to share. If not today, then this week sometime. Thank you. Yes, collaboration is how science works, which is why I'm always pissed off when movies show us the, the lone inventor. Okay. What about this one? says Count Rosenberg will take care of us now, so long as Papa and Uncle John walk for him. Our home is big, but Trebon is a small town. Mama seems happy. Prague, 1587-1608, Elizabeth Jane Weston. Uncle John, everyone else calls him Dr. D, says that not all five-year-olds can speak three languages right as well as I do. I foretell a bright future for you, Lady Beth. I like reading, drawing, and writing poems, but mathematics are hard. John Francis, my brother, is better at calculations than I am. He is one year older. Papa wants me to get the same opportunities as my brother. He says I am fortunate that not all young ladies have private tutors. I study hard to please him. We are fasting this evening, Master Kelly, Uncle John announces. Papa grins. I know what this means. They will be walking all night again. After dinner, I run to the parlor and jump on Uncle John's lap. His beard, unlike Papa's, is all white and rough. I ask him to tell a story. Uncle John makes everyone laugh, even Papa, who is usually so serious. He says, we have to walk now. Mama tells me it's time for bed. I pull the sheets over my head and listen to the low, humming voices coming from the study. I'm afraid of the dark, but not tonight, not with Papa and Uncle John praying. Papa needs to leave now to earn money. I know about money. We needed to eat and purchase things. I do not want him to go. I give Papa a big hug and Uncle John too. I wave at them until I can no longer see their courage. How long will they be gone this time? I ask Mama about Papa's work. She says he gives conferences with Uncle John, providing advice to people who need it. John Francis says Papa communicates with angels. I laugh, but Mama does not. He told me, he says, crossing his skinny arms over his chest. After a long pause, Mama says, Mama sighs. John Francis is right. Your father speaks with angels. Gains, she scratches her head, insight from them. I ask Mama what an angel is. She says it is a being from beyond, a winged entity that lives with God in heaven. I do not know what she means. John Francis says only Papa can call angels. Mama nods, saying he has a rare gift. He uses a crystal ball, John Francis declares. <coughs> I seldom see Papa and Uncle John these days. They do not eat. They are fasting again and spend most of their time in the study. I wake up with a start and pull the blankets to my chin. It is still dark, but I hear voices downstairs. Taking a deep breath, I sneak out of bed. I walk down the stairs, avoiding the creaking ones. I fear monsters will jump out of the shadows, though Uncle John assured me he banished all the monsters from our home. I tiptoe to the door of the study and put my ear upon it. I recognize Papa's and Uncle John's voices. There is also another, much deeper voice within. A loud click. They have unlocked the door. I hide behind the cabinet. Papa and Uncle John come out of the study and walk away, smiling. I count to 100, then tiptoe towards the study. No one inside. Elizabeth, Papa says behind me, what are you doing? Papa makes me promise not to go into his study. There are things in there you should not see. There are a hundred questions I want to ask him, but I can only nod. I have never seen Papa and Uncle John so happy. They whisper and laugh at things only they understand. Mama says it is because they have done good work. I have finished my dinner and asked to be excused. Mama nods and I hurry upstairs. I notice that the door to Uncle John's room is ajar. I hurry to the door, holding my breath, I peek inside. The room is sumptuous. Uncle John always says Aunt Jane has good taste, and he is right. I tiptoe inside and open Uncle John's armoire. It is filled with treasure. Shiny rocks, a black mirror, a wax seal with pictures on it, a gold amulet. Ignoring everything else, I pick up what looked like a globe packed in cloth. Could it be the crystal ball John Francis mentioned? Quickly, I unwrap it. The sphere is heavy and feels warm in my hands. 
It is made of the shiniest gold. On its surface, I see a reflection of my face and Uncle John's. Uncle John, Uncle John grabs the sphere and puts it inside his doublet. I shiver, but he smiles. You should not be playing with things you cannot comprehend, Lady Beth. We have been in Trabon almost two years now. We are happy here, happier than we have ever been. Prague, 1587-1608, Elizabeth Jane Weston. Papa continues to walk while Uncle John is away. He keeps to himself and barely addresses us during breakfast. But at least he is eating now. I am feeble today. Mama says I have a fever and tells me to stay in bed. I sleep all day and most of the night. I awake famished. I dislike the night, but I am not as afraid of it as I used to be. I get out of bed, careful not to make a sound. I do not want to wake anybody up. A pale light emanates from the study. The door is open. Papa never leaves the door of his study open. I creep toward the light on the tip of my toes. I sneak a peek inside. Papa leans over a table, reading a book. It has an odd, silvery tint. Papa suddenly mumbles an incomprehensible string of words and numbers. Papa sprinkles red powder on something upon the table. I did it. His white grin deforms his face. I did it. He picks up a clump of gold. Papa guff Papa's guffaws make me shiver. His voice is deep and he speaks words I do not understand. I hurry upstairs and crawl back into bed. Okay, this is long, I'm not sure it's very interesting. Where is the security room? Exactly behind me. Well, hello there. No posters. One twenty six is two. Uh, one twenty six divided by two is sixty three. Really? So it's seven. 126 divided by 7 is 18. Pierre handed in his notice this morning. This new security measure is freaking people out. They won't let him go. It's part of our contract. Having ultra-high security clearance means you have to go through a whole debriefing process. It takes months. Really? I had no idea. Read the fine print, man. <laughs> Working for Abstergo has its benefits, but there are some drawbacks, too. Big ones. What? What you doing? Where is he? Okay. Wait, is 
Isn't that my animus? No, it's not. Unlock the secrets of our past, powered by Abstergo Industries. The Memoriam. 2000. That's ancient tech. Memoriam S2000 Abstergo Log. Computing makes mind reading possible. Abstergo Industries Inc. And MS3000. MS Sego Industries Animus 1.45S Animus 1.0 1 From 3 Liberation uh, I think it's from uh, the China ones That's Ezio I think that's the multiplayer character Not sh That's a that's, uh, Deagion Oh no. Animus. Ah, that's the new version. I'm gonna need a headset. That's Kenway. That's Connor. That's Connor and uh, and what's her name? That's Kenway. Not sure what's going on here. I can hack the main computer, I guess. I hate this one. God damn it. Initial reports gave us hope that Enzio Auditori would Ezio. serve as an ideal candidate for future Abstergo projects. His charisma, sexual magnetism, and wry humor gave him all the qualities of a leading man. However, his corruption by the Assassin Order robbed him of these qualities as he fell deeper and deeper into a spiral of revenge. Enzio was frequently known to articulate a passive acceptance of evil. He was also a man of ugly contradictions, one who preached free thought, yet traveled well beyond his home country to proselytize his corrupted creed. Just as he's doing here with this impressionable Chinese girl. Oh, that's from the Notice video. Too, that in his gestures and bearing, there is still something of the old lecher in him. Enzio's entire personality Ezio. is built around pure demagoguery, claiming his philosophy is about love when violence and coercion are his primary means of tackling problems. We have therefore come to the conclusion that Enzio Auditori da Firenze would be a risky character to develop. Ezio Auditori. Yeah, and those were, those were clips from the short film. Uh, okay. 
What is that over there? Yeah, something at the end. The network? Oh, now I have level 3. Two fifty eight is at least two, which is a thousand twenty seven, which is probably a seven thousand twenty seven. No, that's not a seven, that's a nine. No. Uh seven hundred three fifty no. Seven hundred twenty eight hundred. No, seven hundred two eighty. Seven hundred two eighty. And then forty seven. That's not correct, that can't be. Let's try nine. Well, let's try just guessing it. There has to be a two in though. One thousand twenty seven. Twenty seven sounds like a nine. But it can't be a nine. Because if it's a nine, it's a twenty eight. One thousand twenty seven. can't be a 9. If you divide 1027 by 7, you get 7 needs to be a 47, and it can't be. If you divide, if you divide 1027 by 3, then you get 9 no, that can't be right. You divide two thousand fifty eight by seven. Uh, it's fourteen hundred, then it's six hundred thirty, that's twenty thirty plus twenty eight. Yeah, it divides by seven. So if you divide it by seven, you get twenty. Actually, it's two hundred. No, yeah, it's two hundred and ninety. Two hundred and ninety. So it's a two and a five. And twenty. No. It's a five, it's not a two. Six 
630, wait. You divide it by 7, you get 200. Yes, and I want to do it in my head. Uh, 294. 294. Divide that by 2, you get 147. Which you divide by 7 again, you get 21. So it's 7 and a 3. Okay. Oh, so it's your excuse for a double hack. I hate you. Our initial research into the life of Ratana Gaiden focused on a period spanning his late teens to his early 30s. But our researchers came away unimpressed by his calm and stoic demeanor, with occasional flashes of extreme anger. This was not the sort of leading man we felt comfortable endorsing. We decided, therefore, to delve into his early childhood, with the hope that scenes of pre-colonial America might hold some appeal. As you can see here, there is a certain naive charm and innocence to this young boy. Unfortunately, our researchers found this young man's story deeply problematic as well. For one, the omnipresence of the Mohawk culture lacks the balance necessary to tell the true story of America. What? And secondly, the Mohawk language would certainly be an issue for most of our audience. We therefore feel that although Ratana Tankon's early life would be of some interest to our more educated viewers, it's unlikely that his story would appeal on a broader scale, being too foreign, as it were, to normal audiences. Our team recommends we pass on this property. He's an annoying character and overly angry, but... Well... Okay, so just... Wait, I can go upstairs? Hang on a moment. No, I already did that one. This one's open. Why are you messing with my actions? What the hell is going on?
Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 32, January 11th, 1981. Host, Eileen Bach. DNA sample, SB1970. Miriam? Miriam, is that you? Are you in here? Barton! Oh, thank God you're safe. You've been very sick. Barton, how did they find you? Oh, Jesus, what would they do to you? Has they hurt you at all? I told them nothing. All they do every day is ask about you and that artifact. But I didn't tell them anything. Nothing. I know you didn't, Miriam. But how are you? You aren't hurt. Not badly, no. I'm fine. Good. We need to get the message out to Oscar. Somehow. We, we need to tell him where... Very interesting footage, Eileen. This is Germany, you said. World War II? Most of the memories I've been able to access come from a period where Miriam was imprisoned by Nazis in Cologne. Miriam. Is she still alive? No, she was my husband's... Mo my ex-husband's mother. She passed away about five years ago. Well, she was spirited. An impressive lady. Definitely. And the man, Bartle. He made reference to an artifact. Any idea what that is? My team is looking into that, but it's not our first priority. We still need... It is now. Really? What? You must have other recordings of this woman. Are there any other mentions of this artifact I should know about? Half a dozen or so, yes. What's this about? You have questions, I understand that. I don't have answers for you. Not right now, but I do have money. <laughs> and if you get me those recordings and bring me any other artifact references you find, then I will triple your operating budget for as long as I can. Triple my budget? My God, what is this? 9 a.m. Monday morning, my office. We have a lot to discuss. But Lillian, I don't... Have a good weekend, Mrs. Bach. Fantastic work. Hello, this is Carl. Hi, it's Eileen. Hey, how are you? Good. Busy, cold. The winter's been terrible. Uh weather's been mild out here. Well, he's only coming for a month. He'll live. And I'll be so busy, he won't have to worry about his mother bothering him. Ah. Uh, still working 12-hour days? I should move a bed into my lab. Look, if you're too busy, Seamus can stay with me. No, no. I want to see him. We'll have fun. You're not too busy to be a mom and a genius. Of course not. His flight lands at 8.15 p.m. tomorrow night. You'll be there? Of course. 8.15. P.m. Let him know you'll be there. Thanks, Carl. I need to run. I'm sorry. Take care. You too. Have you missed the stop? Ah, Eileen. Didn't see you come in. I'm not interrupting? No, it's fine. The subject is unconscious. He's traipsing around 18th century New Orleans right now. In the memories of a woman. That must <laughs> be odd. How long has he been under? 83 minutes. Whoa. It's average. What can I do for you? I just wanted to... To thank you for sending Lillian to see me. She came away very impressed. There. You see, all these bureaucrats need is a little glimpse of our secrets every so often. They like to feel like they're still in charge. Lillian is most definitely in charge. She just tripled my budget. Tripled? Christ, Eileen. You must have discovered who killed Kennedy. <laughs> well, she heard something on one of my tapes that interested her. Something about an artifact. Very vague. But it was enough. An artifact? What sort of artifact? Jesus, get him out of there! Get him out! Oh my god. It'll kill him! He's not the couple! He's having a fucking seizure! Power down! Now! Heart rate 170! Power down! Now! That didn't sound good. Eileen, Warren here. I was all ready to apologize for the late call, but you seem to be away. Maybe with your son. Uh, listen, since the unfortunate incident with Subject 1, there's been a lot of dire talk around the office about my Animus project, about shutting it down, about it being unsafe. Typical top brass bullshit. 
And if they shut me down, then your surrogate initiative goes away too. I'm sure you're already well aware of that. Well, let me be the first to reassure you. This will not happen. I will not let them take this from me, from us. I will not let one death of an undiagnosed epileptic, I should add, I will not let this destroy the decades of incredible research done by our predecessors and the five years I've spent perfecting the Animus. There's still more work to be done and countless rewards to be reaped. So I wanted you to be the first to know I have decided to volunteer myself as my second subject. I am convinced that the Animus is perfectly safe, provided I stay within the boundaries of my own ancestral bloodline. Next week I plan to prove this by staying a full four hours in the Animus. I would be grateful if you and your team would monitor my progress. And after this necessary but ridiculous proof of concept, I give you my word that I will work closely with you to solve your outstanding problems. Your surrogate initiative is a bold idea, and I do believe it is the future of the Animus Project. But while we have the Animus itself, I do not want to waste precious opportunities to prove its safety. I'll see you in the office on Monday. Goodbye. Okay, I think I should go upstairs, right? Yeah, I think it's upstairs. CCO. No, it's the servers. I think. What was the lobby? Right, there were two computers here that I couldn't access. And this. Uh, oh, I was looking at the wrong way. This, 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 this. Ah, uh, crap. There we go. Agent evaluation report for Giovanni Otzoberg, dated 12-11-08 or 1985. This would have to have been leaked from within. This is a classified document viewed on our own network. Someone should hang for this. 
Stains. Experienced agents, military, special forces, background is a definitive, definite, definitive asset. Obedient, follows others without question. Leadership qualities, agent lacks finesse but inspires loyalty in others. Dedicated, agent is wholly committed to our cause. Definite potential, could be, is material, is material. Weakness, agent has a young three-year-old daughter, could be a liability. Other notes, agent is ready to take on greater challenges. Recommend giving agents leadership responsibilities. Recommend sending agents on level 5 mission. A dashing photo of Otzel Berg labeled Helsinki, Finland, 2012-11-25. Unclear who took this or why. This photo labeled Florence, Italy, 2012-11-30. Makes it clear we have a leak. Who survived to transmit this photo? Other level Cairo, Egypt, 2012-1209. That's not how binoculars look like. This one labeled Cairo, Egypt, 2012-1212. Sigma team strikes again. The postdoc claims Obstergo agents kidnap William Miles, but Miles is not pictured. Could be anything. This updated agent evaluation of Otzelberg dated 12-12-03 confirms that leak persisted and perhaps still exists. Updated strength demonstrated a great deal of courage, initiative, resourcefulness, and dedication. Updated weaknesses distinguishing mark, facial scar, bird, Rep reparative surgery should be considered. Other notes following assassin attack of 2112 1128, CTS security report, probably 2012. Agent stuck down the enemy and located the Florence hideout. Agent led Sigma strike team against Florence assassins, responsible for the termination of three assassins. Survived assassin ambush. Agent should not be held accountable for the loss of his team. This was my room. Yeah. Can I hack it? No, it puts me back in the animus. <laughs> Hang on, didn't mean it. Great in Nagua, fine. Gentlemen, how do you find it here? It will work for us. But our goal must be to scatter our operations, to live and work among the people we protect, just as Altairi Ben Lahad once counseled. Well, until that time, it's yours as you see fit. Edward, Captain Woods Rogers survived his wounds. He has since returned to England, shamed and in great debt, but no less a threat. I will finish that job when I return. You have my word. Miss Bonnie. Evening, Anne. Edward? You ready to go back to England? I'll be sailing for London in the next few months. I'd be a hopeful man if you were beside me. <laughs> England's the wrong way around the globe for an Irish woman. Will you stay with the assassins? No, I haven't got that kind of conviction in my heart. You? In time, I. When my mind is settled and my blood is cooled. Sail ho! Coming into the cove! Who's that? You're a good man, Edward. And if you learn to keep settled in one place for more than a week, you'll make a fine father, too. <laughs> of all the money that ever I had, I spent it in good come. And all the harm that e'er I've done. Aww. Alas, it was to none but me. And all I've done for want of wit 
Oh, she came. She came here. Did she? Good night and joy be with you all. Oh, all the comrades that e'er I had. Oh, that's the end. They're sorry for my going away. And all the sweethearts that e'er I've loved. They'd wish me one more day to stay. But since it falls unto my lot that I should rise and you should. I'll gently rise and softly call Good night and joy be with you all That's some way to get me to watch the credits I'm guessing that's his daughter. And if mommy isn't here, she probably died at childbirth. Father, did you always know how to sail a boat? The jackdaw is a ship, Jenny. Not a boat. But did you always know? No. No. No, I learned after leaving Bristol. After you left Mother? Well, I didn't leave your... I didn't leave without saying goodbye, that is. It was an arrangement, you see, between your mother and me. She said you left her. She said you always talked about sailing a boat and making money in the new world. I did always want to sail a ship. That's true. But not for a lark. To support us. And take care of her. And you. Not me. Mother said you didn't know about me. She said you worked only once a year and that she never knew where to find you. That's all true, and I'm sorry for that. If I'd known earlier, I don't know. I might have come home. I hope that I would have. Well, you were busy. That's what I think. I was, but that wouldn't have mattered. Can I steal your boat? It's a boat. ship. I see no boat here. Do you? Oh, I mean ship, obviously. I don't see the difference anyway. Ah, it's a very simple one, Jenny. A ship can carry a boat, but a boat cannot carry a ship. Why then, everything is a ship, large and small. But for my toy boats, the one I take into the bath with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a clever way of seeing it. Come to the wheel. Let's make sure you keep it straight. Is it hard to talk about Caroline, Jenny? About your mother? Hmm... No. She passed some years ago. I miss her, but it's all right. Was she in pain? I don't know. I don't think so. She was very happy for quite some time. Then, not so happy. I didn't see her much after that. Then... She was gone. I... I'm sorry. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you. It's all right. You're here now. And we're on an adventure. Uh, only a little one, I hope. I can't handle too many more surprises. Do you think we'll see a whale? Yes, there's a very good chance. I've seen several. And what about pirates? Will I see pirates? No. Not much chance of that, I think. Oh, that's rather sad. I should have liked to have seen one. <laughs> Tell you what, Jenny. As soon as these winds die a little, I'll let you steer the jackdaw. One little trick at the helm before sundown. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> that's so cute.
Oh, we're back here. Are we gonna play the guy getting assassinated? <clears throat> Miss Jennifer Kenway, may I introduce myself? Jennifer Scott, if you please. I'm sorry, I... I... Uh... My daughter was raised by her mother, Caroline until she passed away some years ago. Jenny prefers to use her surname to mine. Ah, uh, forgive my ignorance. I will. She may not. Father, help me. This little rascal, however, is a Kenway. <laughs> What's wrong, Haven? I can't see the stage. Up we go. How's that? Fine. But won't your arms tire? Hey, I'm not so old as that. But if they do, then we shall quit this posh gig and go and meet your mother for some chocolate at White's. How's that sound? Yes, please. Okay, hush now. Hmm. Hmm, 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 So one coming. Yep. Okay, I have to be done in about 20 minutes, and these cards usually run long, so I'm gonna skip that. Wait, what is all of that? I cleared everything. I finished the game. New Relic Portrait Emblem and Title, Unlocked the Multiplayer. So did everything reset? No. I still have... this. There we go. The final contract. <coughs> But before I do that, I want to finish outside the Animus. That's not where I've been. But if I go behind myself, I can find her office and her car computer. Come on, don't have much time. Ah, damn it. Initial reports on Aveline de Grand Prix led us to believe she would be too controversial and impulsive to appeal to a wide audience. Teenaged memories show her brainwashed and trained to kill political foes of her highly unstable mentor, Agate. Additionally, Aveline spent a disappointing amount of time in the Louisiana Bayou, consorting with smugglers of the lowest kind. Oh, I try never to think. <laughs> <laughs> Which we felt risked her appeal to our female audience which is now approaching 50%. However, as Aveline matured, a new side emerged. A well-mannered and considerate lady of poise and compassion, Aveline came to embrace a new mentor, her stepmother, Madeline Delisle, a tireless fighter for the rights of slaves. Thank you, Madeline. With some editing to prioritize this relationship, we feel Aveline's story will more than meet our needs. Our team recommends a go on this property. Get this one to market quickly. Uh-huh. That's 26. I hacked the security office. I'll go upstairs 
first. To the CCO's office. There are three things to do here. There's no huge voice files, please. No annoying hacks like this. Assassin's Creed Black Flag Oliver Bowden Penguin not <laughs> Penguin Publishing Okay, it's a long one And behind Make it quick As I post it, admit them and submit to them. Yes, we submit that by being ourselves the product of an advanced yet earthbound race of intelligent humanoids, we must also therefore be tools ourselves and subject to the intents and purposes of our creators, despite our limited agency. Then there's the network over there. Let's make this quick. Oh my god, I'm gonna use a calculator. Seven two oh three divided by three equals two hundred and forty one divided by three is not acceptable. So it's at least a three divided by seven is three hundred and forty three. Divided by 3 again, no. Divided by 7 again is 49. And then 49 is 7 again. Not this again. Ah. Come on, come on. Ah, shit. Hmm. <sighs> 
suave and debonair and clever, Hayes and Kenway was a hero for a generation of men desperate for a decisive and charismatic leader, slain by the ungrateful son who could not appreciate the wisdom of his pragmatic, race-blind approach to politics and personal life, Kenway's tenure as Grand Master of the Colonial Right ended abruptly in 1781. <laughs> okay, done with this flow, let's get out of here. Am I really done? There's nothing in the, in the office. I mean, I already hacked this. But no post it or anything. Okay. Take me to the lobby. Yes, there are two computers, two post-its, and security cameras. Oh, there are more. Okay, let's go. Not this again. Shit. Come on, you gotta hurry. We are attempting to synchronize the DDS system. This will only take a moment. We are almost there. The DDS is now in sync. Thank you for your patience. We hope you enjoy your experience. Rudolf II invited many notable figures to his court, making Prague the center of European culture. Among them were Englishman Edward Kelly and his stepdaughter, Elizabeth Jane Weston. Observe her and report any alleged collusion. The hell was that? The elevator. Post it. Remember that our relentless, impertinent, hollow drive to achieve everything our forebears did has led to many embarrassments and disasters, nuclear weapons, super viruses, genetically modified poison food, toxic air, plastic C-rack and C-spawn, and the list goes on. You can look it up for yourselves on the internet, but all this too had a secret purpose in the end. Okay, 3.15 is obviously a 5. I'm thinking a seven and then another five. Three fifteen divided by five is God damn it. Three fifteen divided by five is sixty three. Divided by seven is nine. security. Makes me jumpy. Did they put anyone in the bunker this time? Just for a few days, I think. 
sucks, but I suppose it's necessary. We deal with some really sensitive data. Classified shit, yeah. I don't know how I feel about it, but uh, it's in our contract, so... And they pay our bonuses, too. Inconvenience pay, they call it. Really? That's actually kind of nice. Hi, Sean. Uh, right. Two computers at the end, uh, and another one here. No, no, two computers here. Hello? Not this again. Running out of time, come on. February 12, 1981. Qualitative personal interview with subject one on ancestral research regarding Avalon de Grand Prix. How are you feeling? Any side effects? Not really. Aside from the headaches, they've been worse since I started staying in longer. But I don't want to stop. I like her. I want to know what she does next. What's it like? Reliving her memories. So different. The animus, I mean. The past. At first it was confusing. Distracting. Like New Orleans. The stench. I wasn't expecting all the smells. Smell is the sense most directly linked to memory. When I'm in her memories, it's like I can smell more than I usually can. In general, women have a more acute sense of smell than men do. I had wondered how that would translate. Anything else? Uh, yeah. She's smaller than me, but it's like her body could do more. Did that surprise you? At first, yeah. The ERA people might hate me for this or whatever, but I don't usually think of girls that way. Climbing things. My mom, my sisters. The animal feeling of Aveline sinking her hidden blade in her throat of... Go on. It doesn't feel... feminine. <laughs> what I think of as feminine. But then at the same time, it does. Her center of gravity is way lower. That was a surprise. How easy it is to land. How steady I am on her, her feet. Sorry. This is hard to talk about. No, it, it's fascinating. This is what we need. Pure experience, in your own words. Okay. Can you tell me about Gerald Blunk? What about him? He and Avalon were close. But we haven't been able to ascertain if he might be your missing ancestor. Do her memories suggest anything to you? Um... Does this make you... uncomfortable? Remember, these are her memories. You're just playing them back. It's not even acting. You're a researcher. Like you say, I haven't experienced her... consummating... anything. That, that would be... Anyway... I think maybe she was confused. Oh. Well, um... First of all, I don't really know for sure, okay? I mean, guys think about sex more than girls, right? That's a fact. Mm. As a researcher, what did you observe? Does it mean she's more like a guy if she thinks about... Is that why she's able to assassinate... Well, okay, here's the thing. I don't know her thoughts, but from what's in her memories, physically, the, the, the fidgeting, some hesitation, what she looked at, who she looked away from, the things she didn't say when I expected her to. If I had to guess what it meant, I would think she was thinking about sex. But I'm a guy, so I would think that, right? So what does it mean for women to act that way? It has to mean something else, right? Why not? Why not As a sex? subject, you're able to observe more finely than I am in review. What about 
unwanted attention from men. Well, I thought that would be the hardest thing to deal with. I'm not into that, for the record. Not at all. Yes. It's okay if I you know. are. But the way she dealt with it, it happens so often. She, It's like you stop noticing everything she does to avoid it. Crossing the street, eyes in the back of her head. She knew how to handle herself. When she was charming, felt kind of similar to killing. Or the build-up to killing. I... Can we take a break, Mr. Biddick? Of course. Ready to go on? Yes. Avalyn was black. And white. On her father's side. Yeah. You're sensitive to that? It's Cajun. I guess. I mean, I'm white. Avalyn looks black, so that's different. But you get used to it. Like, with the girl thing. Until someone makes you not used to it. What do you mean? I don't think I've ever had to think so much about what I'm wearing or how I'm walking. But Aveline, it's like she goes through her whole life in these uniforms. People expect her to behave in a certain way. Definitely. Sometimes I worry I'll slip up and play too relaxed at the warehouse and, I don't know, blow her cover. You can't blow her cover. I know, I know. I'm just replaying the memories. I can't change them, I know. But, but I, I see it, right? It's a risk. It's... Stressful? Yes. It's best when she goes out as an assassin. On the roofs or in the bayou. I think she was more relaxed that way. Can you imagine? You're only relaxed when you're going to kill someone. Let's stick to memories rather than imagination. What about the slaves? They're kind of just... everywhere. I mean, that, that sounds bad. Slavery is bad, but... But no one's acting like slavery's bad. I did. It's fun when she frees slaves. Is it supposed to be fun? Yes. We're not looking for supposed to. Focus on what it is. <sighs> Yeah. Uh, it's not 30 degrees at one. I don't have a lot of time. I'm not gonna make all of it. There are three more computers to hack. Two here, one downstairs. Three more post-its. It's near the stairs? It's down. Ah. Well, the hell is it going? Damn it. Holy crap!
No, this is not gonna work. This is not gonna work. This is not gonna work. How the hell? Yeah, I get it. This is a fucking infinite loop. What the hell am I doing? Wait, this works. Olivier, I need you guys to get me everything on the observatory by the end of Friday at the latest. Can you do it? No, are you crazy? I don't even know where it is yet. And Friday's a holiday. A holiday? Really? Do your people realize that working here is a privilege? They care about our jobs, they'll come in and it will be an honor. I know, I'm not crazy. I'm getting a lot of heat from Leticia. If we don't get it done, she'll take it out on the devils and all of our work will be lost. Ugh. Does she even know how anything works here? She has her own pressures. I realize that, but we're already working overtime. And when are we going to discuss how the plot of Devils has to change to accommodate this observatory business? Why am I going to sell this? You're not going to. It's too sensitive. So we're just collecting the memories for no reason? Not for no reason. The dish will use them. This is ridiculous. You want us to devote our lives to finding information we're not allowed to develop or understand or use in, our, in, in any way. And it won't help sales, and my people will never see the work reward in public. How am I supposed to motivate them? I don't know, get the breakfast. Uh, I don't know how to, s to pronounce that. Coffee, but then to sneak in some coffee liquor, a little beer with lunch. Feed them, they'll forgive you. Again? I'm not going to keep fa falling for this. Yes, they will. Bread and circus. Look it up, it's a thing. Come on, be serious. I am being serious. Remember, none of this comes from me. Leticia needs what she needs. If you want the project to continue, we have to keep her happy. The observatory doesn't have anything to do with pirates anyway. It will only complicate things. Take the focus off the action. But it's fascinating. I realize it's more mature and complex. I can't believe I'm the one arguing this. But we are crazy not to use it. Imagine, we could be selling to pirate fans and conspiracy theorists all at the same time. The potential for market growth is huge. We cannot use it, so please stop asking. This is insane. As you already know, Melanie is company's subsidiary of Abstergo Industries, and Abstergo Industries has a different culture. They are hierarchical and rule-driven. We may not always like it, but if we want to advance in this company, we have to be careful. You're protecting her. You're protecting her. I'm protecting you. I know we have our arguments from time to time, but I know you care deeply about our work, and I don't want you to get yourself rejected from the conversation. We need you. Do you understand? Yeah, I get it. Pick my battles. It's common sense. I don't know why this one thing is bothering me so much right now. I'm just tired. 
So I don't need to find someone else to help me? No, we'll get it done. Somehow. I will personally bring the coffee liquor for breakfast. <laughs> well, thanks. I'll find some way to get them excited about it in the meantime. If it makes you feel better, I can tell you a secret. What? If we are successful with the observatory, Abstergo may develop a Las Vegas attraction to accompany the release of devils. What? They're looking into partnership with those aquatic circus people you like? Imagine celebrating with the whole team at a live-action gladiator show Assassins vs Templars vs Pirates vs Sharks. Don't forget ninjas. Whoa, I mean, oh, how do you come up with this stuff? Oh, I have all kinds of little things saved in files here and there. I always think I'll get around to doing something with them in a quiet moment. But there are never quiet moments. Oh well, you'll retire someday. Not if I'm lucky. <laughs> Me neither. Uh... That was 31 out of 33. Yes. Not this one again. Okay. <clears throat> Up, here, there, there. Shit, I missed. Over there, over there, over there, over there, and over there. short one, Dad. Uh, something to remember me by if things go south. If I don't make it out of the temple today. I've tried to be optimistic about all this, but I, uh, I just can't. I think spending all this time at Connor's memories has made me anxious. I mean, his story is so painful in so many ways. Still, he never lost hope when his faith and others eroded. I can only believe that what we are doing is the right thing, and that I can stop this disaster. I know this. I mean, the technology is there, waiting for us to use it. I'm the final piece of the puzzle. Something in my genes, or my memories. Some final piece of code to switch the whole thing on. That's why I'm here. That's why they brought me here. inside that temple is not an ending. It's just another chapter in this, this endless story. And it'll be your job. And Mom's, and, and Sean's, and Rebecca's. To keep turning the pages. You know, I, I keep thinking about something Orson Welles once said. Something like, if you, if you want a happy ending, it all depends on where you stop telling your story. So maybe, maybe that's the answer. Maybe that's how people keep marching forward. If something goes wrong in their dead, something happens to me. When you tell my story years from now, please tell them the one about how I lost my way and then I found it again. Just in time to save the world. And, and just... End it there. That'll keep everyone smiling. Goodbye, Dad. Say hello to Mom. Tell her I love her, okay? Tell her I uh, love you both. I'm wondering if Nolan North became too expensive for them, and that's why they killed Desmond. Anyway, post it. Post it.
Then revolutions in America and France split into evolutions and into more revolutions into Russia and Mexico and India. And the sickening list goes on as men and women fought and died for the right to be indolent and sick and pleasured. But she, may she guide us into the grey, has returned after a sleep of tens of thousands of millennia and we submit to live and walk at her side. We, the instruments of the first will. That was 18 out of 20. Wait, what am I missing? Yeah, I think so. Was that Becca? The horrible double hack. Okay. Device 372 by 2, and you get 600 and. and. 600 and. God damn it, my mind is blank. 372 divided by 2. 686 divided by 2 again is 343, which should be divisible by 3, or 7, which is 49. Yes, I hit the board. Shit. Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 37, August 9th, 1981. Host, Eileen Bach, DNA sample SB1970. Open! Good morning, Miss Kurtz. You're well, considering the circumstances. Are you rested? Hmm. Have you eaten? Your friends are dead, Miriam. Bartle Schink and all his navigators, his Edelweiss pirates. Executed for five counts of murder. This has a trial. You must be proud. There was no need. They were scum. All of them. You hear me? All of you are scum. 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 <laughs> I see it so clearly now. She didn't break, did they? You have nothing. Quiet, girl. You don't have the yours effect. If you did, you wouldn't be talking to me at all. Now the yours lay seat. I said quiet. Now the <clears throat> uh, 
All right. Notes towards a speech in honor of Dr. Eileen Bach's premature retirement. When I first learned of Dr. Bach's unfortunate <clears throat> accident, I couldn't help but feel a great sense of loss at... No. No, no. Hmm. Uh, Dr. Eileen Bach has and always will be a friend and colleague. When I first learned of her unfortunate accident, I was shocked, of course. To see any friend injured in such a way is deeply upsetting. And to further learn that her injuries were severe enough to force a premature conclusion to her brilliant career, well... I would not wish that fate on anyone. But, if there is any solace to be found in her accident, it may be this. That she was injured in service of her research. In service of work that she cherished most dearly. And it is thanks to her, it is due to her diligence, that some of the mysteries of genetic memory have been further illuminated. And while it is true that work on her project, the surrogate initiative, as she called it, has been temporarily halted, the copious amount of work she has done over the past three years has been incredibly valuable. So while her work has been suspended for the time being, her legacy will most certainly live on. <laughs> And that's everything hacked. Wait, lost it. We submit ourselves to eternal servitude in service of a grander fulfillment. We submit the world to itself, it being a product that she feeds life to life and death to death. May she, mother, sister, wife, lover, friend, bring light to darkened minds and humility to those who succor for its wisdom. Guide us into the grey, beloved, guide us. I need just one more sticky note. Which is in the basement. I think. Yes, I'm missing just this one. So what's that last computer over there? That's not my animus. What is it? Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 27, October 21st, 1980. Host, Eileen Bach. DNA sample, SB1970. <clears throat> Test Session 27, 
last week about World War II and something came up about the Edelweiss pirates or the Navajos and your mother's name popped up. Really? That's an odd coincidence. <laughs> does that, does any of that ring a bell? Yeah. Mom ran with that group while the war was on. There were a group of kids who wanted to avoid the Hitler youth programs, but in later years they escalated their activities to uh, bigger ideas like vandalism and sabotage. But why Navajos? And pirates. Just some of the names they used. Navajos, Edelweiss pirates, you know, kids. There were little pins, little white flowers. I may still have hers. That's interesting. And this is for work, researching my mother? Not exactly, but... Sorry, I can't talk about it. Right. You never could. Hey, don't. I didn't mean to be flippant. No. Don't mind me. All for the greater good. I like to think so. All right. Damn it! Five months of this bullshit! We're floundering. Take it easy, Eileen. You're just stressed. I am not stressed. I'm frustrated. I'd like to go again this afternoon. No. There is no reason to rush this. We're hardly rushing. We're running into the same wall over and over again. Why can't we push through? Why can't you keep me in the Animus longer than two minutes? Because surrogate genetic memory data is fragile. The EEG is exploding and your brain is doing too much work. The longer you stay in, the more damage it does. It's even possible that... Possible that... It's possible the memories we're digging into could eventually overwrite your own. Like information on a tape drive. There's just not enough space in your head to do both. Here I come to save the day! <laughs> Good afternoon, all. Did you invite him? No, but you did. Remember? That was months ago, Warren. What do you need? I wanted to stop by. Check on your progress. Well, apparently it's still too dangerous to keep me under for more than a few minutes. Hmm. I always suspected that would be your biggest hurdle. The genetic memory sequencing is the easy part, if time-consuming. But the replay, 
That's something else. Yes? Let's think this through. My subjects are diving into their own genetic memories, so the information is already encoded in their heads. Which means the animus has less work to do, less computing, less parsing. Right. So to get your surrogate data working, to let people experience foreign memories, it will take a hell of a lot more processing power than anyone has. Even Abstergo Industries. Ideally, we'd like to build an external processor that mirrors as many brain functions as possible. Something to handle the calculations. But the cost and upkeep of that would be... Astronomical. Let me see what I can do. I have some sway with Lillian. We won't build Rome in a day. But if we focus on the pretty buildings first, maybe we'll achieve something. Thank you, Warren. <laughs> Till next, folks. The pretty buildings. <laughs> That was not a uh, listed computer. Okay, let's finish. The last mission. Yeah, continue the simulation. Disappeared, Captain. The final contract. <clears throat> Greetings, Privateer. I must recall the sad day upon the calendar, for it is to be my last as an active merchant. Circumstances have forced me into retirement, though I do not believe my enemies will allow me to withdraw without a fight. I plead for your assistance, as I fear both the British and both the Spanish and the British will soon be upon me. Signed, Milo van der Graaf, former honest businessman and constant friend. Sure, I'll take the final contract. Locate the Hollander. This will be faster. Loose tops and royal. Whoa, that's a big one. That's a man of war, and it looks shredded. Alright, the goddamn hunters. Okay, I'll destroy the hunters as well. No time to pick up cargo. Shoot at the farthest one. In your mark, Captain. I can't see anything. Fire! The soul exposed. Fire! 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 And yeah, you are going Fire! down. Fire! 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 And you are going down. Go, go, go! I can't see anything! There they are. Take care of the fire as well. Fire! Fire! Ease off the wind! Come on, move it! There's a squad there, Captain! Ah! Give the order, sir! Stand up! Let's get moving! Fire! Reload! Won't miss next time. It's okay. Race! Race! We're fine. Reef in all tops. Right? We're fine. Reef the mains. Clear off, Gallants. 
Fardo need to protect it. Hang on, the sound making thing is, is making sound. It shouldn't. Go, go, go! Go! Our merchant friend has earned himself some serious enemies. Show me the target. That's a big one. Fire! Are those all men or No, it's a frigate. Ready to spit, sir! Mortars, Edward! Fire! Trim the yards off the wind! Crowd on every inch of sail! Fire! Fire! They've got out joining the fray, Captain! We'll be knocking them up, sir! Incoming fire! Hang Taking on to it, Captain! Fire! Fire! Yeah. Awaiting order, sir! Fire! Captain, run to my way! Ready to fire, Captain! Watch it there! We've been touched! Fire! Yeah. Yes. <sighs> Golden flintlock achieved. Gilded sails. Metal and cloth. The pirate hunters. Let's go get the pirate hunters then. I have plenty of motor shells. Actually, let them follow. That's sugar. That's sugar. Yeah. Man of war. Can I get both? In your mark, fire! More trouble out there, Captain. Fire! Ready to fire! 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 Come to planks! More sail! All sail! Brace yourself! It's okay, we can handle it. Fire! I'm not following it. There's a good shock of crap! This corner goes the gallant and royal! That one's carrying Robin Sugar. Out of the wind. Crowd it all on, lad. They're fearful tied to us, sir. Let's just pick up that guy and go for the nearest.
for the newest bot. All quiet on the first watch, Edward. Care to lose the lawman, friend? Sure. Not doing me any good. Something I can assist with? Mm, let's see. Sell my sugar. Sell my rum. And then sell my honey goods now. Buy the Achilles wheel. And I need 400 for the flower sales. Anyway, that's the end of the game. That's everything. Done. All the best. Epilogue. Oh, Jennifer Kenway. I went to England, lives a life, a man of means, and as an assassin, good and true. 97% total sync. Because there are some challenges that I didn't do. But yeah, that's Black Flag. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next game. I'm considering Fallen Order. But we'll see. Thanks for watching. See you next time for the next Assassin's Creed game at the least. Stay good. Have fun.